Hello everyone, this is Whitey, and in this video we are going to take some footage that has been recorded in X-Fire, and we're going to convert both the audio and the video to make it friendly for Adobe Premiere, so that as we're editing our video in Adobe Premiere, we can both hear and see what we are doing. So I'm here at my desktop, uh, and the programs that I'm going to be using specifically in this video are Virtual Dub, um, Audition, and Adobe Premiere. Historically, if we've recorded footage in X-Fire, we've ended up with a few problems. One is that raw X-Fire video can sometimes crash Adobe Premiere, and ported audio can slow down video playback in Adobe Premiere. There are a few solutions. One is to convert X-Fire video to a format acceptable for Adobe Premiere, and to convert audio to prevent slowdown of video playback in Adobe Premiere. Uh, the programs we use to complete this process are X-Fire to record the video, Virtual Dub to convert the video to a Premiere friendly format, Adobe Audition to extract audio from the converted video so that Premiere likes it better, and Adobe Premiere to edit the final audio and video. Okay, so we have all our programs up. There's Premiere, Audition, and uh, I think we're going to go over here to Virtual Dub. And we're going to open up our raw footage that we recorded in X-Fire. So here's the video here. Uh, for Virtual Dub, you can make a lot of adjustments to the general settings. I use, um, I have my own files that I import every time that I do this. And what this does is for the frame rate, it changes the video and audio durations to match uh, because sometimes X-Fire can record these out of sync. So this will sync them up. For compression, I use a ULRG video codec. And for audio compression, I actually do not compress the audio. I just leave it the way that it is. Okay, now that we got the right settings that we need to encode the video, we're going to go ahead and save it as an AVI. And I worked on part of this earlier, so it's going to ask me if I want to save over. And then it's going to go through the rendering process. For a video this big, it's going to take about 15 minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so here is the end of the video conversion process. This is the last frame on that video, so I'm going to go ahead and close down Virtual Dub. And if I go look at my files list for all my converted video, the footage we need is there. Now the video is now Premiere friendly. We can import it into Premiere and it'll work just fine. It's the audio that's going to cause us trouble now. Uh, because if we use the source audio that we recorded off Virtual Dub, uh, it's going to end up slowing the playback window in Premiere way down. So I'm going to go ahead and import that file into Audition. I'm also going to get an error message that they cannot find the URLG video codec. But because I don't need the video, I'm not really worried about that codec. So I'm going to, go ahead and click OK, and then it's going to load in the audio. This process will also take a few minutes, so we'll be back when it's done. OK, the process to import the audio is complete, so now we are going to extract it so that it will be friendly for Premiere. I'm just going to go ahead and export, file, change the file name so I can pick it out really easy and save. Now that the audio has extracted, we're going to go ahead and bring all this stuff into Premiere so that we can get to work on it. So I'm going to open up a default project that I use that has all my basic files ready to go. Uh, basically a template, except you just use it as a file. Okay, here's our template. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in the audio and let it generate a peak file for that. And then I'm going to bring in the video and allow it to do the same thing. But the video, I'm not going to drag it right in. What I'm going to do is I'm uh, import it into the source monitor. And from there, I can pull just the video. There's your video drag, there's your audio drag. So I'm just going to grab the video, bring it down, line it up. 
and it will also begin generating a peak file for the video. This will take a little longer than it does for the audio. You do not want to make any changes to the source video while this peak file is being created. Okay, so our peak files are done generating. We've made our audio and our video friendly for Premiere. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go save this under the proper file name. And then I can start editing the video. If I hit the play button in the playback window, I get all my sound and all my video with no slowdown whatsoever. There's another unexpected benefit of doing your audio and your video this way. Um, typically, once I get through this process, I'll go through and I'll add my audio into track three, and then I'll export the entire project to Adobe Audition and do some effects work on my vocals because I pick up a lot of background noise. Like you can hear my my twin daughters are in the background right now fighting. I'll try to bring that down as much as possible. But the benefit here is that typically when you try to export audio to Audition, it takes all day. You just sit here and watch the screen render the audio to get it ready to send over to Audition. But when you bring in the audio this way, the way that we've done earlier in the video, you can actually export it to Audition very fast. So we're going to export the entire sequence. We'll hit OK. And see how nice and fast that is? That is so much better than having to wait around. So it takes us a few extra minutes early on when we're processing all this footage. But the back end of it, it takes a lot less time. So we can get these videos um, edited and premiered, prepared to upload to YouTube without having to take all damn day. And then here comes Audition and everything I need will be right in there. Okay, so here is our audio information coming into Audition. Uh, typically for my videos, my commentary will be in Audio 3, and I'll just bounce that down to a new track so that it all shows up as one file instead of a bunch of clips. And then from there I'll do my effects. So I'll do noise removal and compression and equalization. And then I just export it back out to Premiere, wipe out all the existing audio, and replace it with my new master audio file. And there you have it. And that's uh, This is the way that I get around with my audio and video so that I can record it in Premiere without crashing the program or causing slowdown in the playback window. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.